Welcome back to the video library. Today in chapter 4, we'll be discussing the food and beverage module for CPS Air. First, we'll get into quick sale button setup, then floor and table layout, intelligent printer setup for the sales categories, the order screen, the advanced button, end of day procedures, and helpful tips. But first, quick sale button setup. For the quick sell button setup for CP Air, we're actually going to navigate to tools and options as opposed to the food and beverage module. Normally, the food and beverage module houses the quick sell buttons for that module, but for CPS Air, it's in tools, options, sales options, and then quick sell button setup. In here, you'll notice by default it'll go to the terminal that we're sitting at. Perfectly fine to make the buttons on this terminal, but if you want to just make the buttons on a CPS Air terminal, we can just find it in this selection here. My terminal's name, AACPS Test. Now we're just creating buttons on that terminal. We can then use that terminal as the source to copy to other terminals after we're completed. For CPS Air, tab one is the tab to be utilized. Within tab one, the standard size that a normal iPad can hold is 5x5. Five five. This layout will give your staff the ability to look at all the buttons without having to scroll left or right, up or down. You can certainly go outside of that spectrum for your buttons, but 5x5 five five is a full page. When creating the buttons, we can either search for the product specifically here in the product search and hit go. We can search by supplier. We can also search within a category. I'm going to search within a category dinner, for example. To create buttons, there are a few ways. First, we can set up pages. Here, within a page can be buttons. You can also have just specific items as themselves on the point of sale screen. For the food and beverage environment, more than likely you're going to have several hundred buttons to set up. So these pages give you the ability to have a lot of buttons to page within one screen. For example, dinner, if I click on it one time, you'll notice it turns gray. Down here is going to be the label for that page. I chose to have this page be green. The label is dinner. If we want to put anything else on that, we can also change the font size and the font style to make it bold and search for an image. Notice up here we have images on some of these pages. I'm going to leave this just as it is right here. And to get under this button to put buttons under it, we're going to hit add sub item. Now we're under the page dinner. To put buttons onto here now, we can just simply click and drag over and drop. And that's now a button. Notice down here in the bottom right, we have our product code that's represented on this button. At this point, it's going to default to the label of the item description. We can certainly change it by highlighting it, deleting, and relabeling or adjusting. We can change the background color, which is the button color. We can change the font size, whatever we want it to be. Same thing, font and image hit save. Once it's saved, you'll notice the changes are updated. With button creation, we can only click and drag the first time. Notice I can't drag this again. To move it or make an adjustment, we can either right click with the mouse and hit move, and then right click again, hit paste, and it moves. Notice these buttons are also down here. Move, paste, delete, add. To get above a page, to go back to the main menu, we can either hit top level or level up. That's going to bring us back to the beginning. You can continue to make your buttons in this manner. To add a page, we can hit add, and then page, and save, and we have another page. Once again, to get under it, add sub item and then level up to get back. After you have 
all of your buttons put together. If we need this to go to more than the terminal that we're making the changes on, we can navigate down to copy by terminal in the bottom left. We're going to pick the source terminal from the left hand column. So since we're making changes on a CPS test, we're going to make, want to make sure that that's the terminal that we're picking. And then we're going to go to the right hand side for the two and pick where we want it to go. This could be a regular terminal or a, another iPad. Keep in mind when copying these, they're going to go to the sales module if it's a regular terminal, but if it's a CPS error terminal, it's going to go to food and beverage module as well as the sales module. Once you hit continue, you're going to be asked to confirm, and those buttons are now moved. Now we'll need to go to the iPad. Once we're at the iPad, we can log in with our PIN, and we're going to need to refresh for those buttons to take place. To refresh, in the top left, hit the three lines, and then at the bottom, green connected. We'll hit connect again. We're now refreshed. Those buttons have taken place. Tap here to start, and we'll go into our food and beverage module. You'll be presented with the table layout first, but if we're just taking a look at our buttons, we'll notice that they're now shown. Notice the buttons with the cube in the bottom right, that represents a page. Under that page are the buttons. To level up, hit level up, and then notice on the right hand side the page button we had. There's no buttons under it, so it's represented with an X. You also see that X when something is out of stock. This concludes quick sale button setup for the CPS Air food and beverage terminal. Thank you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact support and we'll be happy to help.